Let me start off by saying thank you for being here this, this morning for staying, because I know it's 11.51, quarter of the clock, and our little tummies are saying, feed me, feed me. <laughs> but you know what? We've got something more important to do today. We've got, we've got to talk. Um, and that is my prayer that we, um, that we do family business today and that we work toward healing. And this is informal. Uh, so I, I, I made myself some notes. My sweet Brad can tell you I was up to 11 o'clock last night working on this because my comfort zone would be singing in front of a thousand people, talking in front of the family for even 100, 200 makes me as nervous as a cat. So with that being said, I hope you hear my heart in this as much as my words. And I hope I get my words right. Because we've, we've, as deacons, we've failed before. By the way, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Thurman. You are now married to that sweet girl over here named Evelyn, who brought me to this church uh, 10 years ago, uh, just as we were engaged and then eventually married. I have come to love this church. I was reared in a uh, Nazarene church, actually, much like the speaker last week. But I was not in the same church that guy was, but uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, I have come to this church and it has become my church home. And one that I'm willing to, to um, give my best efforts to as best I can, as the Lord provides. So I have, as I said earlier, I've been a deacon for three years now. I'm a deacon for 41 more days. Again, not that I'm counting. Um, this has been one of the most tumultuous experiences of, of all the boards I've been on across the year, both in church and the professional settings that I've been involved in. This has been a tough year. This has been a tough few weeks. And what I'd like to do is walk us through a, a brief um, chronology of the last few weeks. And the goals are, are, are twofold, transparency and healing. We need a good sized dose of each. So with that, let me tell you that I'm gonna be operating from a couple of ground rules. Now these ground rules are for me, not for you, but for me. Um, some of you know that I'm a human resources guy. I do HR and I do um, compensation, payroll stuff. So my professional background deals with that kind of stuff too. And here at the church, because I'm a deacon, I'm going to be limited in some of the things I can say and some things I cannot say by legal requirements, legal agreements. Okay, so hear me clearly on that. I'm not trying to hide behind stuff, but there are some things legally I cannot say because I do not want to disparage anybody. I don't want to get the church in a lawsuit, simply put. And the other element of that is employee-employer relationships. Those are confidential. I can tell you in my um, Professional life, I have worked on many an EEOC claim where the employer is defending action taken against an employee and sometimes vice versa. I've been involved in uh, discrimination suits and those kind of actions. But we want to stay well clear of anything like that today. So again, the ground rule for Thurman is that I'm careful in what I say. And yet, I will communicate everything I can transparently. So that's the overview. Um, if I don't cover, if you still have questions by the time we wrap up, you're welcome to come and see me or, or find one of the other deacons and ask specific questions. And I'll do my best or they will do their best to give you the information you want. Um, as again, with certain limitations. Because again, guys, we've got to be transparent before we can heal. So that's where I'm going with this. And I won't be talking long and then Jeremy's gonna join me. Or actually, Jeremy's going to pass the baton to Jeremy, and he will lead us in, in some prayer and um, some healing. And I'm done. Well, I, I say we're healing, not thinking about last week, but actual healing for us, I hope. So let me do a brief chronology again. I'm going to start with um, in August. Uh, our Duke and Chairman asked for some letters. Uh, he, he had gotten wind of, of people who were um, discontented, is that the right word? Upset, hurt. Um, so he wanted to basically get some more information, so he asked people to give him some feedback. And he was, uh, he, he gave the deadline of, of October 31, if I remember right. And then we as a board met in September to review the letters. We, we received, I believe, we, the deacon board, received 19 letters, 
Carl was at San Bright. Okay, I couldn't remember, it was 16 or 19. We received 19 letters, which we learned later that that was, that was not all. The letters we did receive were heavily redacted. Now, that was twofold, but, well, at least as far as I know, to protect the identity of the letter writers who didn't want their identity to be known. And then in turn, so when this was shared with our pastor that, um, again, um, some were worried about retribution, some were just just not happy, didn't want, didn't want their names attached to this personally. So we, this is kind of hard to talk about, guys. Thank you. We reviewed the letters in a meeting on Sunday night, um, three hours worth, it seems like. Um, that was tough. From that session, we we levied some some concerns with our pastor and a group of four guys, four of the deacons, went to the pastor, took the letters, now again, the redacted letters without the personally identifiable information, and presented them to Andy, Pastor Andy, and he made the promise to own the issues and to make reconciliation. So we as a board, based on the information we had, we took the action of, of telling the church, and let me pull out that phrase. Um, no, heck. All right, I'll bring it. There, were, there, was, there was not actionable evidence. So there was nothing you could fire somebody for, let me put it that way. There was not gross, the gross misconduct was not established, to borrow words from my line of work. That was based on the information we had. Oh my. Well, you know, let me say too, Dave Brooks stood up on the platform here, and that's the last time you heard from a deacon, so believe me, I'm a little nervous about talking in front of y'all as it was the next deacon. Dave got up and um, made an announcement. Now I will tell you, team, that, I'm sorry, team is the phrase I use at, at work. I will tell you, family, Dave Brooks is a good and honorable man. He yeah. is. Dave shared the the sentiment of the board. And uh, man, he's one of the smart guys. I mean, he thinks over my head. But thankfully, he dummies things down occasionally, and, and I can track with him for the most part. Now, when Dave read the the um, the letter to the church here, it was in the middle of September. I don't remember the date, 12th, 19th, something like that. The choice of, of wording that Dave used made some of you feel dismissed. Some of you who were hurting already, it made you feel dismissed. And I understand it. That is, a, that is an understandable, logical conclusion based on what you were hearing. But I can tell you, Dave's heart, that is not the message he meant to send. That is not the message we deacons meant to send. There was no minimalizing of your feelings, your experience. That was a tough lesson for us because we further hurt and alienated some of you. That was wrong. And let me, on behalf of all the deacons, apologize. That was not our intent. We were trying to heal the church. We were trying to move us toward a reconciliation between those who were hurt and our, our pastor. That was a swing and a miss, as we own that. We deacons own that. Earlier this month, November, we, we, we deacons received some of those same letters in their unredacted form. We also received some that we had not seen before. And um, I can tell you, some of us were, um, we were upset that we did not give this, we were not given this information in September. Information was withheld from us, and I don't care how good the intentions were, information was withheld from, from we as decision makers. And that was a painful thing to realize. I'm not going to point them out, but some of my, my fellow deacons are, are nodding. They remember that moment. They remember how we felt. It was like one of those old crud moments. But that old crud rang deep. It hurt. You know, it kind of left us thinking, what did we do? Because in September, we had been asked to make a decision to take a course of action. But it turned out, we only had part of the information. 
think of it this way, if we had um, a five gallon bucket worth of data when over in the corner was a 55 gallon drum of information. So team, team, I said again, I'm sorry. Anyway, you know what, we are one team. Let me just, just own that. I have, I have two teams in my workplace. I have one in Topeka and I have one, Topeka is that way, one in Kansas City, so I, I refer to my team a lot as we have so many team meetings on the computer. But family, we as deacons made a decision based on partial information. That, that stinks. That is a tough thing to admit. But that is the reality that, that we um, had to deal with. So moving forward, that's when we changed directions and we suggested a sabbatical for Pastor Andy. I can't go into the, all the personal issues, the personnel issues and personal issues of that sabbatical idea, but I can tell you that Pastor Andy had an assignment of things he was to work on and things he was to do. Some, some called that Thurman, you just gave him a paid holiday or paid vacation time. I understand that, but that answer is not true. In essence, yes, you can look at it like that, but there were things going on. You know, it's kind of like the proverbial duck on the pond. You see them, it's just gliding across the water effortlessly, but yet under the water, um, little feet are just a train. That's the scenario of the sabbatical theme. And to boot, we um, asked that there is a neutral mediator and that we begin healing, healing um, sessions with those who had written letters, those who were hurt. Now, the reason for that was actually, believe it or not, for those who had been, for the benefit of those who had been hurt, that was to help our pastor have the, the not complaints, the concerns raised to have those legitimized. Um, I, I sometimes, I, I can't speculate. This was a tool to help our pastor understand the gravity and the depth of the hurt and the pain felt by far too many of you. That was the idea behind the mediation. And then a deacon would be present to further be a neutral party for the benefit of our church family and for those who are hurting. That was the idea. And as you know, we quickly found out, that, that came up in our meeting this past Sunday night. I can tell you, I've been involved in more meetings and more calls in the last three weeks. I've, I've, in fact, today being in the service, the first time I've actually been in a service for months, but I've sure spent a lot of time at church. Even when I was in San Diego a few weeks ago, visiting my, my new grandchild, I spent three hours one night in a meeting. Um, the stuff's important to us. It was worth the effort. But the idea behind that mediation was to, again, bring healing. For those who have been hurt, let you know your voice is heard and we're trying to do something about it. That was always our intent. What is the best for the family, the entire family? Because let me tell you one thing that you may not be aware of. Well, I'm sure you are. There are some who have been hurt, and we have some in the church who know nothing of any of the um, offenses or hurts or wrongs, and they absolutely adore the pastor Andy. I feel for those folks, and that's part of why we're doing this today. And in fact, that leads us to last Sunday. For those of you who missed it, Pastor Andy brought in a guest speaker on short notice. We deacons had no foreknowledge of, of who was coming. This is our pastor, you know, we trust him to, to um, do the right thing and bring in the right people. Had we known who was coming, we would have taken action. I can tell you that one of the deacons had personal history with the speaker last week. He could have given first-hand accounts of why that was a bad idea. So let me suffice. I don't want to say anything derogatory about last Sunday's speaker either, but he should not have been behind our pulpit. In fact, one of the reasons I'm standing here behind a music stand, hey, this is my comfort zone. As a trombone player and as a singer, I'd, I'd rather be behind a music stand because I don't belong behind a pulpit. Now, I can get up and go, okay, make quick announcements and pray. But I am not qualified to be behind a pulpit. I am not called to preach. The Lord called me and gave me the opportunity to sing, for which I am grateful. But guys, um, the, the guy last week, no vetting had been done. 30 seconds of 
work online would have shown some concerns that should have precluded the speaker from being here last week. That did not happen. Many of our church family were offended by what was said behind our pulpit. And the speaker, again, for those of you who weren't here, the speaker introduced some doctrine that is not consistent with what we believe. Now, one nice thing about being a layman, I usually don't get too wigged out about doctrinal stuff. Because again, I told you I grew up in the Church of the Nazarene and here in the Baptist Church, some of the beliefs are not quite the same. Personally, I don't care. What I found here in this church was that the same Lord Jesus Christ is, is, the, the, is the head of this church, just like where it came from. Thus, I was comfortable. And I could serve with my whole heart. But what happened last Sunday was something that the deacon board could take action on, and we did. I'm not going to go into the details, but we know that the results of meant that Pastor Andy resigned this week. It has put our church staff in a tough spot. There's no two ways about that. And our church is now in a tough spot. Now our deacon board, I'll, I'll tell you, Tuesday night when we hashed through this stuff, we knew we faced a lose-lose situation. We knew that more folks would leave if we didn't take action. We knew that some would leave if we did take action. So that's what brings us to where we are today. We're a hurting church. Too many of you were completely caught off guard by what's happened, and I'm guessing that you're hurt and confused. You loved Pastor Andy. What, what are you all talking about? What's going on? Far too many of our church family were healed, offended, and suffered loss. And too many deacons in this process have been hurt and had to resign because of the personal attacks we received. I can tell you, family, we lost five deacons this week. Five, in the last five days. It's, I didn't want to look at my email anymore. You know, what's that old stupid song? Another one bites the dust. Well, in this case, there's nothing funny about it. Um, I, I mentioned Dave Brooks a minute ago. That guy had more attacks lobbied against him. One of the most godly men I know, and even a friend of many of us, back in the set, back in the back, Harvey Williams, one of the most genteel men I have ever met. He was attacked. Um, you know, I'll just stop there. One of the devil's tactics, in my opinion, is that the devil causes us to fight with each other instead of focus on the real problem at hand. There have been so many hurt feelings that some have express their anger by unfortunately inflicting a little more hurt. That's the kind of stuff we need to get healing from today. I tell you, I want to apologize that the speaker was here last Sunday. That should have never happened. And where we are right now, guys, we are we are in a David and Goliath scenario. We are we are we are we're the David. And we're facing a Goliath set of challenges from, just think of the pragmatics. We don't have a pastor today. We are in financial, not straits, we're in a tough spot financially, as, our, as, our, as you can guess. Our giving has been down because our headcount has been down, simply put. And people have voted with their checkbooks. That's a tough thing to, um, to deal with. We're not in the place where we were four years ago when Pastor Hines left. If you think about it, you know, he gave us a six month notice before he retired. And then we as a church banded together in ways that people have ever seen. We actually grew during the time with our pastor. We were with that, I think it was 11 months. Does that sound right? Or something close to it? The, our church grew. But guys, we started in a much different position at that point in time. Today we're fractured. Today we are, um, in some ways, a, a show of what we were at that point in time. And before we can start rebuilding, we need healing. And this would be my, my suggestion. If we seek the Lord for healing of his church, our church, we have hope. If we seek forgiveness where it's needed, and if we offer forgiveness where it's needed, we have hope. 
Please hear my heart in this. My prayers for the healing of the body of Christ. My prayers that we move forward in unity as we serve the Lord side by side. We've got a tough road ahead. But you know what? Goliath, you know, if you think about when Andy had that basketball goal on the, on the platform, Goliath was about 10 feet tall, is the estimate. We serve a God that's bigger than Goliath. But I tell you, team, before we can move forward, we have got to heal. And that's my prayer. And that's part of what Jeremy's going to help us with. But maybe I'll offer this last thought in Romans 5 and 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We're in this together. We have to heal, family. And to that end, I've asked Jeremy to lead us. Now again, if you have further questions for me, um, I'll do my best to answer them. You know, but let's do that privately. And for now, Jeremy, if you would, brother, lead us. Um, the Bible talks about us in the Beatitudes. We want to be peacemakers. It goes on in Matthew 5 9. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, uh, for they should be known as the sons of God. Um, I want to encourage you to, uh, to be willing to forgive, uh, to be willing to, um, not if you will, hide your hurt, but being able to talk about it be loving to one another. When we were without a pastor, I think it was three years ago, um, it was, the church was just, there was just so much love in the church. Um, I, I explained as uh, as the pastor came in and asked me about our church, I was saying we're more like the Thessalonica church, that our love was just sounding from this church. When things needed to get done, People were jumping right in to do them. And um, we were blessed that way. Uh, I remember being in our section, and if somebody wasn't in our section, Susan and I would call them. Nobody asked us to do that. We just did it. Figured out where people were at, trying to be a blessing, and just trying to love on each other, trying to love as a body. We need that same kind of love right now. Look, and then it would be hard for anybody. If they didn't know, if they loved the pastor and the pastor left and there was there was things going on and they didn't know what was going on, that would be hard on anyone. Um, because we want to be that kind of body that does what the scripture says. But just like Carmen was saying, the deacons did not have all the information. These were good men trying to make good decisions with what they had. And um, it wasn't easy trying to get things worked out, but as we move forward, we want to try to learn from those situations and learn from those mistakes and not let someone or it go without me getting the help they need early on versus, uh, you know, trying to figure these things out at the end. But God has not called us to name call. He's not called us to bring up past sins of what somebody else did, you know. They would never write no way. <laughs> God has not called us to to throw stones at one another, but we can't explain ourselves. We can say, I love you, but I disagree. We don't have to say, you know, it's just two ways you can kind of tell somebody if their breath stink. You can say, man, you got the funkiest breath out of sin. Your breath is horrible. Or you can maybe lean in and give them a, I don't even know if they make Tic Tacs anymore, but lean in and give them a Tic Tac. You know, trying to be loving, trying to be supportive of the situation. And uh, we want to try to do what God has called us to do. A successful Christian in times like this will be skillful with the word of God. They will live out the word of God in times like this. That is success. Look, and I want to go on to say, you, if you left here now and you go to another church, it still will have 